during the summer. I definitely appreciate that, really. It gives me a lot of enough free time to do everything I needed to do and get caught up. But All right, tonight is Wednesday the 24th, 24th yep. of July, 2013. This is Management 3025 in our every other week meeting. And we have four of you from class and three other standbys. So I'm glad you're here anyway. We were talking about how often these online classes hold class and meet. And apparently most of them meet every week and they have a fairly structured presentation. Does that sound about right? They have topics they're going to go through. Come in, come in. Okay, are we going to do the, because I left my calculator in the car. We are going to do the calculator. Okay, can I run the question? Sure, no problem. The, uh, the other thing, well, Devorah, you were making the comment right. that while this is an unstructured class when we come, that in the real world, mostly, you get told, here it is, go get it done, and right. you design the structure yourself, and right. you maintain the discipline yourself, and you come to the boss if you got problems. And at least that's the way I've always worked, both whether leading or following, you know. That's where it is where I am, and I, I do a wide variety yeah. of things, and now I have deadlines and and such that I have to meet, and I'm expected to meet those deadlines, but how I get to that point is up to you. Is up to me, sure. and, and it's not so much that my manager doesn't care, because if I approach him and I say, I don't know how to get from point A to point B, he'll sit down and we'll have a conversation, we'll come up with a plan to help yeah. me get from point A to point B. Sure. But he doesn't do that with everything. He, well, if none of us have the no. time to sit down and lead somebody by the hand. Right. But that's one of the big difficulties I'm having to overcome with this course in this program. It, this is, ideally, this is the first of two courses people take when they enter this two-year program. And most of the folks who are coming in, their educational experience has been one of very structured, do this, 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 with all these guidelines and all these little assignments that count for just a little bit and... Constantly, one of the most constant questions I get is, well, I didn't do too well on this. Can I do something for extra credit? Well, yes, you have a lot of assignments in this class, but what happens if they're late? Half, you lose half credit right there. Okay? And then you have a midterm and a final, and how much preparation do I give you for the midterm and final? The entire semester. I, I give you all the questions, no answers, and a couple of books and say, knock yourself out. As far as I'm concerned, that's the way the real world works. In my, in my other... Upper division classes, we have a midterm and a final. That's your whole grade. And people freak out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Can't, I didn't do good on the midterm. Can I do something for extra credit? What do you mean? Do the stuff you already know how to do and do it again and expect extra credit? That's stupid. Okay? If you didn't learn it for the midterm, why should I let you try and relearn it again? You had eight weeks to get ready. And my, I'm right back to what you started with, Devorah. In the real world, when the boss says, I need you to do a presentation for some clients in three weeks, there ain't no do-overs, right? There ain't no extra credit in case you don't do good. There's only one of two things. You succeed or you don't let the door hit you in the fanny on the way out. Right. Now, it's time we made the educational system a little bit more representative of what goes on in the real world. So thank you for this opportunity to address you from my soapbox. What else is on your mind? <laughs> math. Huh? <laughs> math. Math. We'll do math. Question. I'm math. afraid of math. We'll, we'll get to math. I, I want to. Okay. Give, we'll tell you time to come back. I'm yes, trying sir. to find a app, the financial calculator app. Uh, I don't know how you're searching for it. I don't remember how I searched for it, yeah, but I put in T A B A two and bingo, it came right up. Guys, don't buy it. Don't buy it? Because he accepts it, but nobody else does. What do you mean? You accept um, us okay. using the finance. The Who finance, doesn't? Um, Oliviera doesn't accept it. And, um, who was the other one? What do you mean he doesn't accept it? He doesn't phone. let you take the test with your phone. Oh, that, that makes sense. He has to have okay. financial control. I understand. That makes sense. Oh. I understand. Oh, oh, I see all these free versions. These free ones. Uh, if, if it's got the, the time value of money functions on it, you're fine. What functions? Time value of money. Okay. Present EDM. value, future value. EDM calculator. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
let me chat with you for a few minutes before we get into the calculator stuff about something else that's on my mind. I need your feedback on too. And that's that entire seminars and capstone experience at the end of the program. What is that all about? Anybody? A senior project. What is a project? Do you have to have an internship? You don't have to. <clears throat> no? Uh -huh. Then how do you do it if you don't have an internship? Huh? Oh, I don't know. I, I'm not clear I either. I have not sat down and talked with Dr. Searcy about it. But I have been talking with the people over in the HSA program because I'm teaching a class for them. And here's what, I'm just going to give you my thoughts on this whole capstone idea. You're going to do two years to finish up a bachelor's degree, and right at the end, you're going to do something that enroll, and assuming, assuming it involves some real-world exercise. And to me, what that should mean is you're going to go find some business, some organization, somewhere, and you're going to approach them and say, hey, I'm a senior in this program, and as a part of my course work, I'm supposed to do an internship to some degree and I'd like to talk to you about working in your firm. Now, presumably, if you've got any brains at all, you've been out looking for those people for at least a year before it's time for the capstone. You've made some contacts, you've got a network, and you've chatted with some people. But to me, what you should be doing is out there finding these folks and talking to them and saying, tell me about your business. How did you get into business? What's the toughest part of your business? What's the most enjoyable part of your business? And when you start asking people about either their business or their career, that way, they tend to want to share it. Not all of them. We know about the personality types, but most of them. If you can get in a conversation with somebody and say, tell me about your business, and in the process say, what's the most difficult part of your business? What are some of the greatest challenges you face? What you're doing is you're laying out questions that you're going to use to set up an internship or a capstone project. Okay? Because to me, a capstone project is you go into an organization, Working with the leadership there, you identify an issue or a problem that they're facing. And with their support, you set about doing the research, the investigation, the interviews, to gather the data and present them with a workable solution. That's what a capstone should be. So as you think about that down the road, and I know most of you are not that close to graduation yet, or you wouldn't be in this class, but as you think about down the road, to me, ideally, your third, your, your, your capstone course should be where you're finishing up. You're doing your two seminars. Part of those seminars should be out there locating these places, doing these interviews, this research, talking to people, solving the problems. And somewhere in your last, your capstone project should be, here's what I've done, and I'm going to do a presentation for it, maybe even on video. And hopefully that video is going to be high enough quality that when you are out of the job search mode, and maybe by then, hopefully, you've already got some contacts. You say, gee, I'm getting ready to finish my degree, and I am attaching a copy, or I'm attaching the URL for my capstone presentation so you can get a sense of what, what kind of work I do and what kind of person I am and how I am in front of others. And it's a tremendous selling tool. So whatever else is going on with the capstone project, those are my thoughts. And anytime you want to chat about it, I'd be delighted. Okay? Anything else on your mind? I just, yes, I just want to say that um, on the Wednesdays that we don't meet here, mm -hmm. I do come to Santa Fe. I go out to the lobby there, and mm -hmm. if anybody wants to study or they have questions, I'm more than happy to see if my answers compare with theirs. Good. Uh, I come here whether anybody else comes here or not, because Wednesday's in my schedule, and I hate to break a pattern. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well... And again, I'm in the HSA program, the one class I've got right now, two classes I have right now, the students are pretty close to graduation. They've known each other for a while. But they're providing themselves with their own networking organization just by being in class. I think more of that would be better for more people. And talk about where do you work? What do you do? What are you looking for? What do you want to do? Well, I know somebody like that. And start making some connections that way, as well as addressing any kind of coursework issues or anything like that. Sure. Okay. Now, anything else? Tell me about the payday loans. <laughs> Is that stupid? <laughs> Thank you, Chris. I want to. I want. I want to do that one just very quick, quickly because it won't take but a second. It's worse than boring. <laughs>
I want to welcome you all to Snappy Strickland's Payday Emporium. <laughs> I know that you all have financial difficulties in your life. We all have ebbs and flows in our cash flow. Sometimes things happen we just didn't anticipate, and it's not because we're bad people. I know you get in a tight once in a while. I've been in a tight once in a while, and I'm here because I've been there. I'm here to help you. All right? Here's, here's, here's my deal for you because I, I know you're hurting. I know it's tough to go to the banks. They, they do credit checks. They do all kind of references. Maybe your paycheck isn't real regular. I understand that. I've been there too, right? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to loan you $300 to get through the rest of the month. Now, today is the 15th of the month, so I'm going to loan you $300. And uh, at the end of the month, you pay me back $330, okay? That's my job. Now, today is the 15th of the month, let's say, and I want you to pay me this on the 31st. So come back in two weeks, give me $330. You get through the month. I get a little bit of interest for, for helping you out, and we're both better off. You buy that? Is that okay? I mean, look at this face. Am I going to lie to you? <laughs> I've been doing this for years. I, I, my job is to help people out. Did my dad teach you this trick, or do you know my dad? I mean, the interest is just really high. What is the interest rate you're paying on this? You're paying $30 to borrow $300. That's a 10% interest rate. And that's where the American public stops thinking. I'm sorry, this was for 15 days, correct? Yeah. But when we quote interest rates, we quote them on an annual basis. Annual percentage rate, have you heard that? Uh, this is for two weeks. How many two-week periods are there in a year? 106. There's 52 weeks divided by two weeks. There's 26 of these periods in a year, so you multiply it by this 26 to get the annual rate I'm charging you, and you're paying me 260% interest for your loan. Snappy Strickland. I only charge you $315. Wow, I only got $232. Point six, he six percent. That's because of that fuzzy calculator you got. Oh, I also it's from Texas. Huh? Because it's from Texas. Is it for, well, that's probably it. Yeah. I didn't date. You just got to look at me and know I'm honest. Okay, I'm going to quote you the truth. $30 interest on a $300 loan is 10%. You're not going to get that at your bank. You know that and I know that. You see what I'm saying? This happens every day, and it's not just the little payday lenders and the little, little tiny shop. The big banks are getting into this now, literally. They're making payday loans to their customers at these rates. And why would people do that? Desperation. Desperation and or ignorance. So don't you do it. All right? <laughs> That concludes my presentation. Are there any further questions? Okay, I had came in a couple minutes late. Did we say anything about the final? We haven't said a word about the final. Okay, so what should it be? Let me see if I got this right. I gave you somewhere around 180 study questions, multiple choice, no answers. I gave you study questions out of the Caproni text. And presumably, you've already answered those and memorized your answers. I've told you that in those multiple choice questions, I may select a few of them and ask you to explain them, so you can't simply memorize the answers. And now we know that you'll have this kind of calculation, in fact, that retirement problem, probably. I don't like that problem. No. Well, we don't answer that. So well, I have a sparkling personality. I'm really short on imagination. Okay. That's pretty much the final as I see it. I think it's pretty well come in here, sit down, take it. Uh, the other thing is for everybody, I have not called for writing assignments from anybody yet. When I do, you got 24 hours for whatever I asked for, whatever's due up till then. If you've been doing them on time and putting them in a folder, all it is is upload them and done. If you've been procrastinating and I say, send me writing assignments one through five, and you go, 
then it's going to be a busy 24 hours. <laughs> or, or what's the option? There's always an option. What's the option? You can take the course again next term. Yes. Okay, so that's the final. That's the termination of the course. What else? The one that we just did when you we had to break it down and see how much the meeting was going on. Which one that was the meeting meeting management problem? Where's my right? I'm sorry. Where's my right? Uh, I don't recall, but let me give you an example of that. Just to show show you what we're doing. Yeah, look at the board in paper. Which which writing assignment is that? You remember? I think that was what was that three or four? So it's it's all already already due. Yeah. I don't. I, I'm just going to show you the quick. I think I just finished five. Yeah. Where he had all the salary. I I don't mean to be rude, but since this is my damn classroom, could we have one conversation at a time? I really appreciate that. That's called courtesy. Thank you. Okay. Now we're talking about the writing assignment that has to do with meeting management. Okay. How do you approach that? What I wanted you to take, do was take every person. If somebody made thirty-eight thousand dollars a year. And I think in the directions there was something to the effect of everybody's figured on about a 2,000 hour year. So if you divide those in there, this person is earning, and we're costing the business, $19 an hour. And you did that, if you did that for everybody who was supposed to be to the meeting, for however many hours the meeting was going to take, that was going to be the cost of the right. meeting. Right, like $219. I don't remember the number, honestly, but assume it was $219. What I'm dry, trying to drive you at is, is it worth pulling those people away from whatever it is they're doing for $219 to have that meeting, or is there a, another or better alternative? Opposed to sending out an email or something? An email, a Skype meeting, uh, talking to them one at a time about their particular issues. That's right. what I'm after. Budget meetings, finance meetings, yeah. those have to be done. <laughs> Yeah, but always with meetings, we ask, how much can be done before you get there? Okay, and if there are four of you that are concerned with the budget, and there's going to be nine of us there, I don't need to make the other five listen while the four of you hash out what we're going to do with the damn budget. Get together, get it solved, present it to us. What did you think about the strict time lines? Needed. You get five minutes to present on that, you get seven minutes to present on that, you get four minutes to present on that, you be the timekeeper, anybody goes over, you just raise your hand, I'll shut them up, okay? How do you like that approach to a meeting? You have to, to go be that faster. It makes it get done on time. Yeah. What else? It, it can be done. You just have to have someone who is willing to be a little tough like that and keep everything. Absolutely. Disciplined. If you are the manager, would you <clears throat> want the me meetings to go that way? Yes. And, and it's amazing how many people I get coming back to me, not just this term, but every term. Oh, gee, that would be a terrible thing to do in a meeting because meetings should be a time to be able to explore ideas and discuss stuff. How many of those meetings have you been to that drag on for two hours with people talking about stuff that nobody else cares about? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, you have a parking lot, you put it on the whiteboard over there. That's, that's fine. The, the thing is, if you're the manager, you run the damn meeting. And if you need to set up that kind of structure and then be flexible with it, Fine. You can be the nice guy by saying, well, we're going to take an extra five minutes and, and let's go ahead and explore this. That's fine. But if you go in there with no agenda, no sense of time, and no ability to look at your watch, there's another term for that in management. It's called stupid. You're, you're, you're taking advantage of your people. You're wasting their time. And so the, the object of that exercise is to make you sensitive to meetings. Why do you suppose I put that as an assignment? Because I've been in more damn ugly, stupid meetings than I want to count. I don't want you doing that to people. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Anything at all? When's the exam? Two weeks from. Two weeks from today. Today. Where Where are we? Here. B12. It's at five thirty. It's at five thirty. Thank you. What do you need to bring with you? Calculator. Scantron, a calculator, and some notebook paper. You know, clean your mind or yeah, never mind. <laughs> what? And a pen and a pencil. And a pencil. Scantron has That's to be marked. Right. <coughs> Good. Anything else? Peace.